everybody. Welcome to Rock and Roll Shinsu Chu, episode number 83. My name is Gabe Estel, and I'm here with my co-hosts, Jonathan Getz and Dennis Levi Leach. How's it going, fellas? Amazing. All right, good. Well, I hope you guys uh, have had a spooktacular weekend as we uh, as we approach Halloween here. Um, tonight, I'm um, going to pay tribute to uh, one of our favorite artists that we recently lost. Um, on October 2nd, uh, we lost really one of music's living legends when Tom Petty suddenly passed away in Malibu. Uh, his death occurred less than two weeks after he and his band, the Heartbreakers, concluded their 40th anniversary tour. Um, while the accolades and remembrances have not been in short supply, rightfully so, tonight on the podcast, we're going to take a little bit of a different approach to honoring Tom's legacy as a live performer. We're excited to construct an around the horn style set list featuring our favorite selections from Tom's deep catalog. This includes his work with Mud Crutch, uh, as well as his work with and without the Heartbreakers. Uh, this is Rock and Roll Shinsu Chu, episode number 83, a tribute to Tom Petty. All right, guys, but before we get into um, our tribute to Tom, we're going to go ahead and start out with our grab bag. This is where one of us, each of us, I should say, chooses a random baseball or music related topic um and the other the co-hosts uh, are unaware of the topic prior to its announcement and we kind of go back and forth on it and then after the tom uh the tom tribute we'll do uh our share your cards where we share a baseball card uh from yesteryear so want to remind everybody before uh we kick things off Please follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Rock in Chew. Like us on Facebook and please visit RockChew.com for all of your rock and roll Shinsu Chew needs, including the archive of every episode. All right, guys, let's go ahead and start out with the grab bag. Um, Jonathan, I'll let you go ahead and begin. All right. Um, and then uh, we'll work our way around. Sure. So I was, I was thinking about this today for a while and i realized uh what i wanted to talk about was staring me in the face while i was watching game five of the world series oh. uh and that is if i, I want to pose a question to you both okay if you had to replace your wardrobe with the <laughs> uniform history of either the los angeles dodgers or the houston astros mm. you would be wearing these this team's uniforms from throughout the years, the good and the bad, okay. from here on out, which team would you choose and why? Well, the Dodgers uniforms haven't really changed all that much. They have not. They've been, they've been pretty consistent. Yeah. I mean, basically, like... I mean, you're going to get Brooklyn days, too, though, where they had, like, the cool font. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yes, it's mainly blue and white and script. Yeah, I mean, uh, really, since... Shit! Since they moved to LA, it's been about the same, basically. Um, yeah, they have the uh, the red number, so it's the crisp white home unis with the yeah with the blue yeah, dodgers. It's a clean red oh, yeah. number underneath. Is the red number still a thing? Yeah, yeah, it is. Right? I, okay. I'm not a huge fan of the red number, but I'm okay with it. Uh, yeah. I I mean, it, it, balancing out with the rest of the uniform, I think the rest of the uniform is a is a classic, personally. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's tough. Do you, do you, you either go classic, or if you want to spice it up, you have all the different crazy Astros uniforms. I mean, every day is a different disco party, basically. Right. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna go. You know, I want to have fun, uh, so I'm gonna go with the Astros because uh, their their 19. I don't know if it it was started in the 70s. Um, their uniform. You guys all know the one I'm talking about. The rainbow. Like the, the rainbow, the Nolan Ryan like 1985 uniform. Um, I mean, that's 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 one of my favorite baseball uniforms. Mm -hmm. So um, that would win out, you know. Um, the Dodgers, I, you know, I get bored with wearing it every day. With the Astros, I could, um, I could, uh, I could really, um, yeah, you, you know, I, I could have a lot of fun. You could you could mix and match with quite a bit, no matter what what kind of pants you had. By the way, this would just yeah. be the top. You can wear whatever pants you want. You okay. don't have to wear like cleats right. or anything. Um, right. I, was, I was wondering stirrups. this could get awkward. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> because 
yeah, they go from you know those rainbows to then the the navies. They they went into yeah. navy and gold in the mid nineties, and then yeah. they went into a uh, like a, a burnt sienna or something in the in the two thousands, yeah. and uh, and a and a and a navy and a dark, almost black. Uh, well, and then yeah. and now they have like the solid orange as like an alternate, don't they? Yeah, yeah, which yeah. looks good, I think, which I like. Um, it it, it kind of looks like Baltimore's orange alternate yeah. jersey. Um, I like the uniforms Houston's wearing now. I think they look good too. I mm-hmm. think, uh, you know, they kind of they sort of resurrected, you know, that rainbow era logo, uh, and then you know, kind of tamed it a little bit. You know, um, tamed the rest of the uniform. I I, I like their current uniforms, um, and uh, I remember too. Before they went with like a like a burnt sienna, as you said, yeah, I think in like the mid to late nineties, like the uniform after the rainbow is pretty ugly. It's I I kind of like the star logo, but the uniform itself I remember had a pretty ugly font that I didn't like. The, so. Did you say the the mid nineties? Yeah, I think yeah. like the mid nineties, like it's when a, they got Randy Johnson briefly. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a it's a totally like mid nineties logo that you would expect, <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 I mean, I guess bad. I'm probably gonna go Astros too as well, just yeah. just for the fun factor and the the chance to to mix it up. Although there are some really early Brooklyn Dodgers uniforms that have like some patterns and some pinstripes and stuff. Yeah. That yeah. Kind of unique yeah. as well. Yeah. With 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 Brooklyn, you'd have you know you'd, you'd have, those are cool, but with with LA, I mean, you're basically wearing the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's been the same, same uniform. Same uniform for what 45 years you know 50 years practically which is cool i mean in the sense that you know um if it ain't broke in um but uh yeah i would go with the astros all right all right i'm i'm i i'm outvoted two to one uh i'm going dodgers i although i just like to wear blue that has a lot to do with it but um, a Dodger jersey would look okay, like with jeans. You know what I mean? Like you could, mm-hmm. you could kind of pull that. You know, it's like it's kind of subtle. You know, it's like eh, all right, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, it, it, and there's the Christmas of the crispness of the Dodger white against the blue. That seems yeah, seems to be a, um, uh, unique in baseball. Even though there's a lot of teams with just a white jersey, but there's something about the Dodger blue on the Dodger white that is. Uh, kind of like cubby blue on cubby white. Sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's different. They, they though. basically it's different. have the same cubby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh. Um, and then, of course, oh, cool, you know, man. the Royals kind of ripped them off when they created <laughs> their logo in 1969. Didn't it, it? Correct me if I'm wrong. In the 80s, was the Dodger blue a little brighter than it is right now? It looked to me like it was. Like, you know, the Fernando Valenzuela, um, you know, era, it looks like it was a touch brighter. Uh, a touch brighter. Yeah, I According could be wrong. According to uh, sportslogos.net, okay. uh, it, it got darker about 2012. Oh, okay. Uh, they, they darkened up just the wordmark Dodgers. Okay. Um, but I think everything else kind of stayed the same. In 99, they had an alternate uniform that was a very dark blue. Uh, according hmm. to sportslogos.net. Hmm. Um, and then, yeah, yeah, you're right. In the in the 70s, it does seem like it. Maybe 70s as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that they darkened the Dodgers across the uniform. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. wow. Nice yeah, grab, that's good. Uh, I'm going to throw mine out there. Um, last night, Ten twenty eight seventeen in Manchester, Metallica played, and uh, in the middle of it, I guess Kirk in the in the UK or in yeah, New Hampshire. Yeah. Okay, all right, Manchester, UK. Yeah. All right, um, I, I figured that much, but there is a Manchester, yeah, New Hampshire. Yeah. That's <laughs> the uh, Robin Kirk led the crowd through like a, a verse or and a chorus of "Don't Look Back in Anger." by oasis wow which i think is totally strange like yeah, they're in manchester talking, so they're in manchester right but right. uh it got me thinking like what are some of the strangest covers you've ever heard and so 
Um, like in thinking about that, I don't know if you guys have ever heard Devo's version of Satisfaction, but it's mm, really yeah, strange. It's, it's, it's kind of mm. awesome, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's awesome in its own strange way. Yeah. Um, like if we, there's ODB, Old Dirty Bastard, has a version of Susudio by Phil Collins. <laughs> I'm obviously going to be listening to that right after we record this episode. <laughs> Well, like, yeah, it's just like I was in it. And this can be recorded or live. Like if you saw a band and they covered a song yeah. and you were like, wow, this is seems totally out of place. Yeah. I, uh, two that come to mind for me, like I'll, I'll go with because for me to consider the the entries that would be, um, yeah. you know, just I've heard I'll, I, I've heard two songs covered live by two of my favorite bands and they've only done that cover song once. Yeah. So you could tell it was definitely like, I don't know, about a spur of a moment. I'm sure they rehearsed it, but, you know, it was definitely like, you know, it was sort of jokey kind of like was Jonathan could speak to this as well. When I saw Pearl Jam do Everyday People uh, in 1995 yeah. at Soldier Field, it's the only time to my knowledge they've ever done that. It is. And then in 2006 in Milwaukee, I saw the Black Crows and they did Train in Vain by The Clash. Um which wow. you know yeah, they've ever done and it's you know it's uh i i never really think of them like oh the black crows should cover the clash you know mm-hmm. um <laughs> uh it was great it was fun you know it was fun i mean they rich sang it and you could tell they 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 were laughing you know what i mean it's not like during oh, yeah. the song but like after like they you know there was all smiles all around oh, yeah. you know so i i get the impression I, don't know. The, yeah, I totally so, forgot. I got to put up there the BCDC. Seeing them play ACDC was totally strange. Right, right. The fact that it was Halloween kind of yeah. lent itself to that a little bit, though. You know, I mean, yeah. not. I know what you mean in the sense that it was. It's odd to hear them play those songs, but yeah, the train in vain um, yeah, was cool. was totally unexpected. You know. So, yeah. Yeah. You got one, Jonathan? Yeah, I, uh, one that came to mind, at least a band that does uh, unexpected covers, and these are studio covers that I've heard, is Soundgarden uh, doing um, Smoke Sack Lightning, which they did on Ultra Mega OK, uh, their 19, 1988 record. Uh, they also did Stray Cat Blues. Uh, that's a uh, Bad Motor Finger uh, B-side. And... And then, um, oh, gir- speaking of Devo, they, they also covered Girl You Want. Devo's Girl okay. You Want. Uh, mm-hmm. Waiting for the Sun they've covered. Just for some reason, I don't expect. It seems weird that Soundgarden would cover anybody. <laughs> you know, right? because they're covering right. their and own they're, thing. like, totally unique songs to cover, too. Like, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, so that, that definitely came to mind. Um, real quick, to speak to... Uh, the Don't Look Back in Anger, I think that's become, uh, since since the terrorist attack in Manchester, that's become the, um, uh, the that, that uh, what do you call it, um, the, well, the kind song. Of like a, an anthem. Of that's, the, yeah, thank you, the anthem. That's become an anthem for Manchester. So it may have been mm-hmm. an homage to that, but I have no idea. Oh, well, yeah. I also have a little I want to say Lars is like a big Oasis fan, too. I think I read that somewhere. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I have a little bonus part of my grab bag. I'm going to show this little guy off. This oh. I I bought it on Flux eBay. capacitor. <laughs> I got it. I got it on eBay from China for fifteen dollars. It's a tube preamp, and so you can plug your phone into it. You can plug your computer. You can plug a CD player. Like digital sources is what you're looking at to plug in there, and it gives it the the warmth of tube sound, man. And for fifteen dollars, it sounds amazing. Right on. So I I highly recommend anybody that listens to music through their phones or CDs I, or I, their I, computer. I, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I might actually get one of those. Is yeah. it just a USB that it goes in, or what? What? No, how? no. Okay, so you have to have some kind of a stereo. Sure. So just so a receiver. Like, or yeah, a receiver. Yeah. You can put it in any aux input on a receiver. Uh huh. And yeah, you uh, you would turn the volume up on the receiver and then use the the volume knob on the preamp as like your main volume. And uh, yeah, it. Yeah, I I was amazed at the difference for for as cheap as it was. Nice. Hmm. Probably a good good thing to have in the like the digital music listening era. You know. Yeah. 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 
Cool. Yeah, yeah good. I'm going to make, make note of that, damn it, uh, Levi. I'll, I'll get a link and to Jonathan. Yeah. We'll throw it up. And yeah, we'll do cool. it. Cool. And if they want to advertise on the podcast, that would be great because we just give yeah. them a bunch of free advertising. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just a disclaimer we are not affiliated with this company in any way whatsoever. Right. Yet. Right. Yet. <laughs> well, totally tubular, Levi. Um, all right. Mine's kind of lame, guys. Uh, like I said, I was just scratching. It's weird. I. Probably like the one I thought of the most, you know, like the the grab bag that like I pondered and like couldn't come up with an end. But anyway, Halloween is approaching uh, in a couple days, right? Um, and two, I was like, oh, you know, who, what baseball player like has a Halloween birthday? Let's look at something lame. Um, so <laughs> I did, and uh, I found though two guys. I, just, I I guess I just didn't know they were the same age. Okay, so two players from our youth. Born on the same day, they're both born on Halloween, nineteen sixty-three. And let me see here: did they ever play for the same team? No. But um, I'll give you guys a—I'll give you a hint. All right, it's a first baseman and a catcher. Um, and they—let's uh, see here. One of them played for quite a few teams. Uh, he played for like six or seven teams. The other um, is a bigger baseball card than baseball player. Like he was a sought after card, but not as much as 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 a player. Okay. Uh, the other the other one, first baseman, uh, played for a really long time for a lot of teams. These two guys were born on the same day, so they're the same age. Uh, one played for for you know quite a few years longer than the other um, um Le- levi yeah. levi do you want to ask a question and make a guess then i'll ask a question yeah, and make i know, a I, guess. know. I, 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 I still like haven't well, like narrowed I, it down that much yeah, but this isn't a question but like just a very like so was yeah. it the catcher that had been on multiple teams a lot uh, of teams? well they've both been on multiple oh, okay. teams but the the first baseman the, the, the more so okay uh the first baseman more so first baseman like bigger career and you know long, one, longer longer one? career and What's which it? one? Which one was the bigger card? The the catcher. Oh, the catcher. The catcher. The catcher, the catcher okay. was like a, a bigger, okay. you know. Okay. Uh, w- were you had a career, uh, but he, he didn't necessarily like pan out, you know, was, as much as the other guys. Was the catcher on the Indians? No. Will you will you tell me the uh, the the year and make of the of the catcher's what you might consider his most iconic baseball card? Mm, I can. I'd say about eighty eight. An eighty-eight and, catcher, uh, yeah, about eighty-eight. Uh, eighty. I I remember his Fleer pretty closely. Um, yeah, right around there. Eighty-seven. What team was he on in eighty-eight? Detroit. Matt Noakes. Yep. All right, and then so there's one. Uh, other cat was born on the same day. Matt Noakes Halloween. Uh, All right. Yeah, Matt Noakes is Halloween, and this cat's Halloween too. Um, this cat started. Um. Okay. Here's a here's a hint. Did play for the Cubs, but not for very long. Near the end of his career, he played okay. for the Cubs. Near can the end you, of his career. Can you give me a year? Uh, I would say he played for the Cubs, like maybe around. Uh, let's see here. I early two thousands. Okay. Um, Derek Lee. No. No. Good guess uh, though. Uh. Uh. Good, very good guess. Todd Walker. No, no good, another good guess, but no. Uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, he played with the Cubs. Oh one, oh two. Was he an All Star? Uh, I don't know about with the Cubs. No, yeah, just he was, ever. Yeah. During during his career, he was a perennial All Star. Yeah, and um, is I think uh, he's not in, is he? I I I I I think he deserves a Cooperstown vote personally. If you look at the numbers. Oh man, now I feel bad. I'm not getting him. Is it? Yeah. Rap- no, Rafael Palmeiro played for the Cubs in the eighties. Um, yeah. First baseman. Um, more, f- more, fewer famous than nickna- famous nickname. Five hundred home runs, more or less. Uh, just almost. He, he's he's like a hair under five hundred. Oh, uh, okay. So it's, he's it's not in the he's not in the hall. He should be. All right. in my opinion. Okay, it's not Dale Murphy, 280, obviously. Two eighty four lifetime hitter. 
493 home runs and he's not in the hall which is bullshit but anyway <laughs> oh man i feel Dude, awful this is, I, I, yeah this, i'm totally stumped okay he, he played for tampa bay twice tampa that, bay like before the cubs and then matt, tampa bay, matt tampa bay again. was it matt no Williams? no okay. guess you're putting up some good guesses but who did he uh, hit the but, most home runs for which team um do you think guess uh, it's got you know he he played for a lot of teams for like four years so it's hard i would say toronto probably but uh, yeah toronto or atlanta maybe atlanta wow um I'm trying to think of who played first. Man, I got guys Cubs. stopped. Uh, like I said only two years for the Cubs, yeah. so oh one, I mean, oh two. Yeah, I'll I'll I mean, edit this for brevity. So I, I want to get I want us to get this. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I mean, could, like a lot of accolades, you know, five time All Star, uh, three time Silver Slugger, led the league in home runs twice. I mean, I'm making the case the the guy needs to be in the goddamn Hall of Fame. All right. <laughs> I, I I I didn't realize his numbers were so good until I looked at this right here, and I'm like, what? Yeah, I mean, I knew he was a great player. He Not was, John Olerud, no. No, no. Uh, he never played for the Cubs. Um, uh, a, f- a first baseman who raked for the Blue Jays. Yeah, but then also played two seasons in his later career for the Cubs and right. Tampa. And Tampa, yeah. And nice. the Braves. I mean, and the Braves. Fred McGriff? Yep. There you Got go. It. Thank Crime you. Dog. Thank you. Crime Dog. Yep. Crime Dog, Halloween <laughs> birthday. As soon as you said Braves, I was like, that's that leaves one person that played for the Braves and the Cubs. I, I mean, when I think of Fred Griff in my head, though, it's just like all these different uniforms on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, <laughs> I always still see him in the uh, like 87 Donruss Blue Jays. I, I guess I, I think of the Blue Jays first, probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, but um, only only five seasons with Toronto, three with San Diego, four with Atlanta. Uh, hold on, so, I'm sorry, five with Atlanta, uh, four with Tampa, two with the Cubs, Dodgers, and then he ended his, ended his career in Tampa. Yeah, he should definitely be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, dude, look at that. Big, look at that two eighty four hitter. You know, like what? McGriff's not in the Hall of Fame, dude. Fun That's fact: nuts, I I know I've probably said this on the show before, but I got to see his first game as an Atlanta Brave. It was during the inaugural season of the Colorado Rockies. Oh, in ninety ninety two, you went ninety two ninety two. Yeah, and it, and it was. Uh, it was his first game. They, like, announced it. It was like, and starting his first base and his first game for the Atlanta Braves. It would have been 93. 93. 93 then, yeah. 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 Hmm. Yeah. Cool. Right All right. Well, yeah, so Noakes and McGriff. Same, Noakes and McGriff. Uh, same. Same age. Same yeah. day. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, McGriff, McGriff played for, like, eight more seasons than Noakes. Did. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Matt Noakes, a friend of the show. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So, <laughs> nope, buddy, that one's for you. All right. So, uh, we'll go ahead and get to the heart of the order now. Um, obviously, this is kind of, you know, I've said it before, this is kind of one of those episodes we sort of wish we weren't having uh, in the sense of, you know, uh, we're remembering uh, really uh, shit, I don't know. He's, he's so good, the words are escaping me. An iconic singer, songwriter, and, sure. and musician, Tom Petty. Uh, who passed away about a month ago, uh, unexpectedly. Um, the last and, couple of years have seen a lot of tribute episodes. Yes, yes, they have. Yeah. Uh, it's probably, gosh, it's probably probably going to keep increasing too. But uh, anyway, we want to pay honor. To, we want to honor Tom tonight. Uh, through uh, we have a lot of fun with these around the horn set lists. So uh, each of us picks a uh, a, a petty song, and uh, you know we can tell a couple stories along the way. Uh, I decided his last tour, um, which gosh, you know, hardly was basically ended like ended like six weeks ago, um, uh, was about twenty songs. So I think we'll do we'll we'll there's well there's three of yeah we'll we'll do twenty songs tonight. So uh, somebody might get a, a a couple extra picks. That's okay though. So I think we'll do eighteen and then uh, we'll do an on, he he did like a two song encore. Uh, actually, let's do this, guys. Sorry. Eh, edit this. Um, <laughs> if, if we each get six, then that'll make it even, and it'll be 18. Because 
I looked at his set list and it like varied from 18 to 20 on this last tour. So, uh, so we'll do 18 tunes. We'll do 16 and then we'll do, uh, uh, you know, a deuce for the encore. Uh, so yeah, that'll, that'll give us each six tunes. So, so 18 total, um, yeah, 18 total songs start to finish. Yeah. Okay. So 15 regular set and three encore. Yeah, let's do that. That's the way each of us will get an encore tune. Yeah. 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 I was just trying to mimic how his set lists were built, sort of, but anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, it's our rules. Uh, Sure. But, yeah, so 18 tunes, we'll do 15, and then a three encore, uh, three song encore. So, um, you know what? Let's let's do this. Um, To start, here's how we'll start. Petty's birthday, I think, is October 20th, I believe. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. October 20th. So which of us has the birthday closest to October? It would be Jonathan. May yes. 19? Yeah. Yeah. So why don't you I'm go March, ahead and start? I'm March 15th. Yeah. yeah oh, I can't 7th. do that math. Like going yeah. backwards on the calendar. I can't do that math. Wait, am I? Yeah. Or am I closer? Jesus. <laughs> God. Is... Sorry. Um, you know what? J- Jonathan, go ahead. Jonathan, start. you go. Right, okay. Just, just do it. Okay. Do I'll... I'll I'll get us started. So the the trick here is, do we do we start at the beginning or do we start somewhere else? And uh, meaning uh, within his repertoire of songs. And I think I'm gonna I'm gonna err on the side of starting in the beginning uh, with a cut off of self titled and uh, uh, anything that's rock and roll to to start off the show. Okay. Yeah. Good deal. I'm I'm writing these down by the way. Um Nice. Uh good good choice. His first album's so good. Um it came right out of the gate, swinging, if you will. Uh but anyway. Uh so okay, and then we'll go uh we'll go Levi and then me and then uh do we do the draft style snake or are we uh uh just just start back Let's just go around and around. We don't have to okay. worry about the snake. That'll work. Yeah. All right. So okay. the joint was hopping around and around. All right. All right. Uh, Levi, go ahead. I think I'm going to go with a song that he was uh, basically the leader of off the Traveling Wilburys, and it's a song called Last Night. It's always been one of my favorite songs that he sang. That's a great tune. Yeah, that's a good tune. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I always liked... Um, he always had such an affection for the 1950s and 60s, you know, like early 60s. Um, you know, like his, he was like so into Chuck Berry and, you know, he, he always reminded me, uh, his, you know, it's like, he was like Buddy Holly crossed with Roger McGuinn. You know, that's how, that's how I view Petty, you know, like the jangly birds, you know, the guitar, but then also, you know, he's totally rooted in, in the 50s. Um, which I, I just I love that stuff so much about him. Um, I'm gonna go with this is a ripper off uh, "Damn the Torpedoes," his third record. I'm gonna go with "Century City." Nice. So uh, yeah, I've got I'll, I'll I'll do that as my my first one. So yeah, yeah. I like I like how it starts, guys. Yes. Good, good, yes. Uh, Good choices. Yeah, I, Century I, City. I, I think that both of your selections. Was that, that that was about uh, his constant uh, uh, legal issues getting out yeah. that album. Yeah, yeah, right. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice. Uh, no, that was on my list too. So I'm glad you chose it for me. So now I don't have to worry about it. There you go. Um, uh, so I'm I'm going to jump ahead now in the uh, repertoire and something to follow Century City. Uh, Mm. I'll say let's let's go to uh, actually just uh, step ahead a couple albums uh, Southern Accents uh, Make It Better off of Southern Accents okay yeah Southern Accents is great I'm gonna throw the, I'm gonna throw the crowd a bone and give them a single I think alright um, okay 
we're, yeah, because so dude, far we're, we're so far like we're we're constructing like like four piss breaks for everybody else. But us, you know? Right? Yeah, yeah. Hey, we're, so, the, it, yeah. It, once the set list is all said and done, it's going to satisfy about two percent of his typical content. <laughs> all right, but anyway, um, go on. Yeah, it's tough. There are so many good singles too. So, um, I think I'm going to bring it down and go right. like like a super sultry breakdown. All right. That that's uh, that's such a good moody tune. You know, yeah. that's uh, his singles are like you know with all but like three or four of them. I'm like I don't need to hear those songs ever again. And that's that's not that's not a knock. You know, I mean the the it's a testament to his talent that he can write songs that resonated with so many that he could write songs that resonated with so many people. Um, but yeah, breakdown I never mind hearing just because it's so moody. So moody. yeah, it sets it sets such a great mood and tone. When yeah, it comes to right, it. definitely. All right, uh, so Jonathan chose make it better. Okay, breakdown. All right, um, I'm gonna go. You gonna with... you gonna keep it down? Or you're gonna take it back up? No. Um. Uh. Okay, this is. Uh, I'm gonna go more recent here. Um, I like the last DJ a lot. Um, I would say that it's probably. I, I'm not that familiar with his two most recent albums, uh, Mojo and um, Hypnotic what, Eye. Is it the Heartbreakers? Hypnotic Eye. Yeah. I, I, I've listened to him and I thought they were good. I just I just don't yeah. know the songs enough to pull any tunes from those albums. Um, so I like the Last DJ a lot. So I'm going to go with the song on the Last DJ called Lost Children, which is one of my favorite songs on that okay. record. Okay. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So that's so that's kind of keeping it down there. Yeah, a little bit. Um, and then I'll, I'll go ahead and, and finish that off uh, with stepping back a couple years previous to that uh, off of the uh, She's the One soundtrack and yeah, cool. uh, Angel Dream number four. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's an interesting soundtrack and album in that it's completely bypassed on the a documentary. Oh, okay. Yeah, they just yeah, they, it seems like it'd be a big deal, you know, it. like he, he did a whole movie soundtrack. Right. You know? I mean, there's, I've read a little bit about it, and I guess a, a lot of it was just kind of leftovers from Wildflowers, but still, it's like, there's some really good tunes on there. Wallace is awesome. and Yeah. 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 He always, um, and what's so sad is that I, I don't know if it's going to happen, but it needs to badly. He was in the process of either starting to make or has already started to make a super deluxe wildflowers edition to where he was going to go back and take some of those songs from she's the one and like there's some better recorded versions of them or they were mm-hmm. going to kind of remaster them mm-hmm. and and it's just sad because that record needs to be on vinyl badly like original copies for it right after he died people were paying like fifteen hundred dollars <sighs> Jesus, god and so it's yeah and it was originally uh, supposed to be a double album, right? Wildflowers. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's why it has like four songs that sound like they could be the last song at the end of Wildflowers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Can't leave this one off. Can't leave this one off. Well, that is a perfect segue into mine. Um, I'm going to pick a song off Wildflowers. Nice. And it's Honeybee. Ah. And and I think it's I think it's Tom Petty's like. It's the most I've ever heard Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers sound like Neil Young and Crazy Horse. Mm-hmm. You know, especially because oh, yeah. li- li- in some live versions of it too, man. They there's a live version of it from Saturday Night Live from 1994 where Dave Grohl plays drums and it's heavy and it's grungy yeah. as hell. It's yeah. awesome. It's badass. Our yeah. our our friends, uh, one of whom drummers appeared on this show, the Steepwater Band, they do a really ripping version of Honey Bee. Um, if you get a chance, it's great YouTube too. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll check that out. Yeah, they did it. They did it a couple weeks ago as, as a sure. tribute to him. Yeah, so good stuff. All right. Uh, so, oh, back to me. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um. Hmm. Uh, you know what? Ah, oh, gosh, I don't. You know, one of my favorite songs. 
I'll go with a Wildflowers tune as well. Uh, I don't know if it necessarily fits right after Honey Bee, but um, my favorite song on Wildflowers is actually A Higher Place. Um, so I'm going to go with that. I know it kind of is... <laughs> You know, it's it's a little bit of a of a weird fit after Honey Bee, but uh, we can yeah. go up and down. Man. We'll make it work. Yeah, maybe he'll talk for a little bit after you know, in between Honey Bee and then go into higher place. You know, yeah, so, yeah, because yeah, it's about mid set anyway. So, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Right. That's the, that was the eighth song. So higher How place are you doing, song. everybody? All right, so <laughs> <I'm Betty. laughs> um, so yeah, uh, then a higher place, and then I think we're gonna be. I think we might be kicking it up a notch, so I'll help that out. And I'm going to go over to It's the Great Wide Open album and choose... I have a few favorite cuts on there. And I'll go with uh, King's Highway. Okay. Off of of End of the Great Wide Open. Can... Can you tell me how many more picks I have? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, you got one, two, three. Uh, three? you've got uh, three more. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm going to save my last two picks for up, up songs. So I'm going to take it down one last time. All right. And um, in 2008, Tom Petty reunited with his original band called Mud Crutch, and they. Have since then uh, put out two records. Both of them are excellent. Um, I think I'm going to do a Mud Crutch song, and I'm going to do Crystal River. It's like a nine-minute epic kind of slow jam. Okay. We'll throw nice. that in, and then, yeah, maybe we'll crank up the show from there. I'm going to kick my cat out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I regret not seeing Mud Crutch. Uh, they they did a tour for that because they I think they put they put out two records. I think yeah yeah the second that, one's just called Mud Crutch Two. Yeah, the second one uh, they played the Riviera down the street. Uh, it's probably I don't know maybe like four years ago or so. Um, yeah, not that not that long ago. Yeah, yeah not that long ago. Yeah, I, re- I regret not going to that because Mud Crutch is him Campbell and Benmont are in it, right? I believe those are the three yeah. uh, out yeah. of the heart. Right, right. It's all right, Jonathan. Your cat was just telling me why didn't I pick learning to fly? <laughs> no, actually, she was supporting your decision of a mud crutch up. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's me. You. Okay, jeez. All right, how many do? I, let's see here. I have one, two. This is the twelfth three. song okay. of the set. Yeah. Okay. Gosh, ha, ah, man, fuck, I'm running out. Um, mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. We, uh, we, will there be a second encore added? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going to go up tempo. This is my, because well, this is like my favorite Petty single off, I would argue, probably his, uh, his worst record or like his least effective. I'll go with Jam and Me. Okay. Um, like, I, I, I personally think like Petty never really wrote a bad song. But if he does have some songs that aren't that great, they're on uh, "Help Me, I Can't Get Up" or "Help I Fall and luck, I Can't Get Up." Lucky or... on that one. It might be. That's that's the probably the one Tom Petty song that I could probably never I could go without hearing it. Right off of right. "Let Me Up," I've had enough. I don't know if that's what it's on. Lucky, not, is... not you got lucky. Yeah, yeah, you got lucky, babe. When I found. Oh you no, that's not on. No, that's yeah. on. Um, uh, long after dark, or um, oh, okay, okay. Uh, I or it's it's not on that. No, Jam okay. and Me is like the only, yeah, the only like well known song mm-hmm. on it, and it's it's really it's it's the, far the away it's far talking, away the best song on that record. The album you're talking about is the one where it's like their faces all yeah. sexual, yeah. Something, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's the one where they kind of like I think probably succumb to '80s trends the most, in my opinion. Uh, the video for You Got Lucky is pretty pretty 80s yeah 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 uh yeah you got lucky's either on hard promises or the one after that the the long after dark i think i I could can find out well yeah we'll do that while jonathan what's your next pick yeah so i'm gonna um i'm gonna keep it rocking and i'm gonna choose a cover here and this they they played both of these and so the the trick is to choose the one i really want to hear 
Um, so I'm going to take the cover of Psychotic Reaction. Cool. All right. Levi. Time. So what? This is this is one of your last two, then, Levi. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to throw I'm going to throw him a bone and give him a single. I'm going to I'm going to wreck him, if you will, with you wreck me. All right. Yeah. One of my we favorite. Want, we, we don't want the crowd to like leave, you know. <laughs> so. Yeah. What was it? Would you pick? <laughs> you wreck me. Nice. As as much as I I, I sometimes scoffed at his uh, lack of variety in his set list, um, it's hard to construct a Tom Petty set list without at least a couple hit singles, you know. Um, they're, oh, they're, hey. in, they're infectious tunes. So uh, anyway. while Gabe, while you decide on on your uh, set closer here, right? Yeah, um, uh, would it be? Uh, yeah, so while you decide on that, I'm going to hand the headphones over to to, to Betsy. She's going to make oh. my encore song All right. pick. All right. And in the meantime, she can review what, what has occurred so far. I, I trust her judgment. All right. All right. Um, huh. Okay, I know what my encore song is going to be. Okay. So, so that's that's all for me. So I've got one more before this. Um, God. God, this is tough. <sighs> It's like, do I go with one of his... Re- Hi, Betsy. Is How's Hi. it going? Good. How are good. you? Good. good to see you. Sorry, I was deep, deep, petty thought That's for a fine. moment. So, <laughs> good to see you. Uh, welcome, Betsy Blodgett, everyone. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to go with... Uh, this is this is a slow song. Oh, no, this is the this is the closer. Fuck. I, okay, so I have to go up-tempo. I, I'm, not, I'm, not ending, yeah. I'm not ending, I'm not ending with a slow, the set with a slow song. I'm going to go with King's Road. Hmm. Yeah, uh, I it's it. I, there was one other song that uh, I really wanted that I, I, I maybe should have chosen earlier, but like I, I had fewer songs than I thought I had. But anyway, all right. So we've got the encore. So I guess um, Betsy would start us off with the encore. Oh, I get the last song though, though, don't I? Of the you encore. Do. Yeah. Right? The last song of the whole show. Yeah. yeah, Dave, yeah. Dave, Dave. All right. All right. Cool. Betsy. All right. Um, so this I'm, is the start of the encore. Start of the encore. I'm going to go from a overlooked album, the She's the One album. Okay. Because I like it. The Zero from Outer Space. Zero from Outer Space. Because it's right. rocking, but it's got some crazy traveling Wilbury esque witty lyrics. It's a good one. Right. Cool. Good call. All right. Good oh. choice. That's my choice. I, I had thought about Hold doing on. maybe you can, for you can my... off the rest of the <laughs> I thought my final one was maybe going to be Handle with Care but it's like Orbison handles a lot of the vocals in that so I was like I don't know who, who would do that but um he, he always took on that note Levi uh, in, yeah. in recent years uh, probably about 20 years ago or so he added this cat to the Heartbreakers named Scott Thurston uh, he, I mean you would have saw seen him play yeah. you know with yeah. him um uh-huh. He's kind of like a multi instrumentalist, uh, and he handled like he handled <laughs> um, that part, uh, the the Orbison part, like when they would do okay. handle air live once in a while. Okay. He's a really a really good musician. He played guitar, he played keyboards, yeah, re- really. So that's that's the cat that would do it most likely, you know. If... The thing is, I'm gonna go with one of the first Tom Petty songs I can remember hearing and thinking, man, that's a badass Tom Petty song when I was young. Like mm-hmm. MTV era when I was seeing all the stuff my sister was watching and, and listening to, and it's the one that I think maybe has a little bit of it's Tom Petty's song that has maybe the most punk edge, and that would be I Need to Know. All right. All right. Good choice. Yeah. It's just I don't know. It's just something about that song to be always. I don't know. It's something about it gave like a yeah. punk vibe. I know what you mean. That's like, that's don't talk on the street says you might go solo. Just like I don't know. It, that's on you're gonna. That's on you're gonna get it. I think from seventy eight. So so he would have. That would have been kind of the throes of punk, you know, right there. So maybe he was, maybe he was listening to the Sex Pistols or something. I don't know. Um, all right. Well, you know, the last song that I'm gonna pick then. Uh, it's not one of his. I don't think it was a single. Nah, it wasn't a single. Um, 
I'm going to choose it for sentimental reasons, and I think just because he's gone, um, uh, it's kind of a, a little bit of a tearjerker. I'm going to go with it's off um, into the great wide open. It's called "You and I Will Meet Again." Mm. Um, so I'm going to go with that for purely um, sentimental reasons um, as the uh, the closer. So yes, we we've, we've done it. We've satisfied like. 10 percent of Tom Petty's fans, yeah, but, um, yeah right, definitely. You know, we satisfied ourselves, and that's what matters. <laughs> this, this would be the concert he plays, and then he would never play another concert again because <laughs> no one else would buy a ticket. Uh, after that. But anyway, <laughs> so well, good deal. Well, well, thanks for hanging out, Betsy. And, yeah, uh, thanks for having uh, me. The zero from outer space. Yeah, I like it. It's overlooked. It's a good one. It is. It is. Good choice. Good choice. <laughs> yeah. All right, you want your headphones on? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yep. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. How did it end? What did uh, you guys pick? Uh, oh, uh, well, Betsy, yeah, Betsy shows zero from outer space. Heard that uh, one. Levi went with I Need to Know. Okay, cool. And then I went with, um, totally sentimental, I went with You and I Will Meet Again off into the Great Wide Open. I Damn, dude. Just That's him, heavy. Him be- him be, I know. I mean, I, I I know it's kind of a tearjerker, you know, at the uh, at the uh, at the end of it. That that song I was listening to it the other day, and uh, like, you know, shortly after he died, and it 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 it, it kind of stopped me. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I, I don't mean to sound corny or anything, but I was at work, and I just I, uh, yeah, I, I had to stop what I was doing for a minute, you know, and just sort of kind of kind of gather myself, really. Sure. You know, it was uh, it was tough. So I'll I'll, I'll go with that one. Good choice, good choice. Nice set. I think uh, I think that we we developed a, a damn fine set. Yes, yes. His his most his most ardent fans would uh, would appreciate it. I so, think so. Uh, good deal. Well, 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 Tom, uh, rest in peace, brother. Uh, thanks for thanks for thanks for all you gave. Um, so uh, at this. point, part of the show uh we're gonna close it out with uh, a little segment called uh show your cards where each of us kind of goes back into our baseball card archives and pulls out in most cases the archives we do some newer cards as well uh sometimes so we do a card that kind of either has sentimental value or just maybe a cool story or something unique about the card uh so um jonathan why don't you go ahead and start us off with your card and uh yeah we'll go from there all right i uh in honor of tom petty i was i was looking for baseball players uh from near gainesville and uh uh not many baseball players from gainesville but uh several more from nearby jacksonville florida and uh on top of that he's a uh player from a team that's still battling for a championship this year and uh, it's the 1986 tops houston astro glenn davis born Jacksonville Florida um, this is for some reason when I think when I think 86 tops this is like one of the first three or four cards that always pops into my head this was uh, this you, you guys would be rocking this this jersey and these sleeves yeah. for yeah. Pro- maybe <laughs> like on Tuesdays yeah. Yeah. Um, good, good, good be there yeah, yeah. It, yeah. it's it's almost a play on those 80s Padres uniforms it just is missing the like the yellow and brown a little bit yeah Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and yeah. the '86 tops that that font at the top should be like used for everything. <laughs> yeah. There's there's yeah. good photos in that in that year of tops too. I think in yeah. '86. There's a really the the Sandberg card I talked about. It's a, it's a good one. Yeah. It's like a nice pose of him. Like, yeah, he's, he's laughing. You know. Yeah. 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 Good stuff. Um, well, speaking of, I'll, I'll go next, Levi, just because you said no Padres. Worries. Uh, you said Padres, and I have a I Padres card. Yeah. Um, you know, no, no real story behind this, no connection or anything. I was just, I was actually going through my cards earlier today with with my son, who's three, and uh, he was bending up, se- bending several of the cards. So fortunately, the cards aren't worth much anymore. So, <laughs> so that's good. Uh, I apologize to Jeff Fisher, uh, who's out there. Uh, Barrett really bent the shit out of that card today. Um, anyway, so uh, so I, I, I stumbled across this one. And um, I, in 1989, yeah, 1989 tops, um, I would say that 
that was a really great year for the future star. Um, uh, the, the logo is so, great. Yeah. yeah, the logo's great. Um, I would say probably the most iconic future star of that year is probably great. The the Greg Jeffries yeah. card. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, I would say two others. Uh, one of them's the one I'm about to show you. The others would be uh, Gary Sheffield. He's got the braces, right? Oh, you remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's wearing braces, you know. So um, got those taken off a few years later. So uh, anyway, <laughs> Gary, when he was on the Brewers. Uh, but this one right here, um, let me make sure I can, you guys can see it here. Um, so this one right here, uh, this is yeah. Sandy Alomar yeah. Jr. Future, future. Hey, Gabe, star. will you center that exactly right in front of the camera and up a little bit? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Yeah. So Sandy Alomar Jr., uh, future star from 89, uh, had only played one big league game in 88, and uh you know this is just this is this is a pretty iconic card from that set you know this is if if i'm thinking of 89 tops this is probably one of the like five cards that i think of um it seemed to be in a lot of packs yeah yeah the the catcher's mitt is quite prominent as well you know it's like you don't really see a good meaty catcher's mitt you know on a card Um, right when the ball is like entering it yeah it's like it's stuck in there the ball it's it's like one of those velcro balls Yeah. yeah totally and yeah, so, as you were saying, that logo, man, with the color fade on the yep. on the font. Yep. Yeah, so it's good. There it's he good is. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So so good. Good looking. Good. Great looking card. So uh, I chose. Well, right on. Um, yeah. Good choice. My, my my card is a uh, a card that was an insert in some of the packs that I bought recently, and it's a very timely insert, and it's of Dallas Keuchel. The, yeah. Who I think. Uh, might have got rocked tonight by the Dodgers. I yeah, they took him out in the fourth inning, I think. He got beat up a little but, bit. Yeah. He's got the uh, he's got quite the beard going there, and so that, that made me think of maybe a little bonus question. Like, what do you guys think of the players all kind of having the same? Everybody's got just like the same mini ZZ Top thing going. It's well, it, it's it's too ubiquitous. Like, if I saw it like five years ago, I'd be like, right on, man, that guy's got yeah, a yeah. hefty beard. Now it's like it's so it's so it's so prevalent that been, it, yeah, I, yeah. I barely notice now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. I, yeah. yeah, I mean it implies a little bit of personality, which is nice to have in an athlete because yeah. you can't assume yeah. that there's going to be much yeah. of a personality, and also that he doesn't play for the Yankees, which is also a bonus. Right, um, right. Yeah, no facial hair. No yeah. Yankees. but uh, Unless it's Mattingly's mustache. So, so this makes me think of a double bonus question: What player? Do you think that doesn't have one would look awesome with the mini ZZ top? <laughs> or like a, a, a historical player? Anybody. Ozzy Smith, I think, would have looked awesome. Ozzy <laughs> Smith would, yeah. <laughs> the big ass beard. Uh, um, gosh. Let's give it a I'll, I'll go with, I'll just like, he looked like a guy that would like be able to like have an axe and slay an orc or something. I'll go with, I'll go with like, I'll go with John Crook with a giant beard, you know, just kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of yeah. portly guy hanging out in like a pub in Middle Earth, you know. Crook's got an axe, yeah, him and Dykstra. Big signs of ale. Uh, tonight we kill orcs, you know. Yeah. Uh, I'll, go with, I'll go with I'll go with Crook for a giant beard. I'll um I'll say, you know, I, I don't know if it would be a giant beard, but I'm going to modify his facial hair. Um, Gr- Mike Greenwell always had a nice little, like, thin little mustache. Oh, yeah. I, I, I yeah. would have liked to have seen him kind of had, like, um, the mutton, add some mutton chops on there, onto that mustache. Uh, th- Mike, Mike Greenwell, yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. Yeah. The cat approved. She, she yeah. yeah, she's, she's a big fan of Greenwell, yeah. Right, right, right. Did, did Wade Boggs ever play without his mustache? Yes, because he played for the Yankees. You can have a mustache. Oh, that, no, you're right. Yes, yes, have... yes, yes. You have to have like a clean kind of mustache, you know, like a Tom no, Selleck, right. Right. Tom Selleck, great mustache, you know. That's because like Giambi, like Mattingly had one, Giambi. Had right. One no, one. you're you're right. You're right. Does Bloggs have a mustache in his rookie card? I don't know. I think he does. Was, it's was, it's interesting how these players after they retire they'll they'll carry yeah. the facial hair um, well into the retirement, and and I think it's kind of because like it helps them be recognizable still. <laughs> <laughs> and well the, into their sixties, the he can do the ad for the Chevy dealership. Right, you know, yeah, so. right. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not seeing any cards of of Boggs where he doesn't at least have a stash. Some yeah. of the cards even has a beard with. Him. Yeah, he's got a he's got a beard on a, on yeah. a few. Yeah, uh, yeah. 
that that's my favorite Boggs era is with the beard. Um, but so, do you think Keuchel, twenty years from now, when he wants to have that endorsement with the local Houston Chevy <laughs> right. dealership, he's gonna have You'll to have, have the have beard? That, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Man, no one will know. Like they, should, Jake Arietta's wife on Instagram posted a photo of him after the season was over. He, like freshly shaved, it doesn't look like him at all. Right? Uh, yeah, I, it's strange. I didn't know who it was. Yeah. I was like, "That's Jake Arrieta." Yeah. yeah. With, with Justin Turner being a redhead too, like I guess there's there's really no going back for that guy now. You know, <laughs> I mean, no, right? <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. But anyway, uh, as my my wife likes him because he looks like she's like, oh, I, I who's that guy that looks like the guy from Game of Thrones? You know, that's like the, <laughs> the red bearded guy. You know what I mean? Like the Levi. You watch Game of Thrones, right, Levi? Yep. I don't. We don't get the HBO. Oh, all right. Anyway. Anyway. So. Nevertheless, <laughs> yeah, there's red beard. Um, so, all right. all right. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for hanging out with us tonight uh, as we paid tribute to Tom Petty and had some fun along the way. I want to remind everybody you can uh, find out everything about rock and roll Shinjuku at rockchu.com. Uh, also, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at RockInChu. That's in, as in Glenn Davis spelled Glenn with two N's. But our but our, our Instagram and Twitter uh, handles only have one, so at RockInChu. Like us on Facebook. Also, leave us a review on iTunes as well. That would certainly help us out a lot. Um, tell us what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, um, and just tell us something. Drop us a line uh, as well. And you can find us also on all of, uh, just about all of your favorite podcasting apps as well. So uh, however you want to listen to the show, uh, we'll be here for you. So until next time, uh, we will see everybody later and have a great night. Peace.